everybody. My name is Bryn and I'm an instructor with 4-H Capital. Today we are going to bring the science to your kitchen and I'm so excited. We are going to be making pizza dough from scratch and then pizza. So let's put on our aprons, put on your chef hat, and let's get started. So pizza is really awesome because it actually can be super healthy. It's a beautiful combination of every food group that we want in a meal. So let's dive a little bit more into that. So with every meal we eat, we want to make sure that we try to get um, one or two servings from every food group. So our food groups are here. Um, we have grains, protein, fruits, vegetables, and dairy. So the reason we want to try to get all of these in every meal is that it's going to give our body the nutrients that it needs, the vitamins, all of that good stuff, but it will also keep us full longer, which is great. Um, so with pizza, we have some major components that go on every pizza, right? So the crust, um, try to decide where you think this goes. The grain, if you guessed grain, you were right. So the crust is our grain. Next is pizza sauce. So where do you think pizza sauce goes? Fruits and veggies, that is right. So tomato is a fruit, but um, whatever we put on top of our pizza, maybe like peppers, that would be a vegetable. Meat would go next. So here's our meat. Where do you think that would go? Protein, that's right right there and then last but not least one of the best parts in my opinion of pizza is the cheese that goes on top so where do you think cheese goes dairy awesome. so you can see that pizza is a great way to get every single food group in just one meal and that is awesome our bodies will be so happy Enough talking, let's get started on our pizza crust. We have all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour, salt, olive oil over here, and then right in front here we have honey, active dry yeast. That will either come in these little packets or in a little jar like this. We will also be using water. But other than that, for the pizza dough, that is all we need. So it's not too much. It should be things um, that you probably have in your pantry already. Whole wheat flour is a little bit more specific. So given the circumstances right now, if you don't have whole wheat flour, that is okay for this recipe. Just sub in all-purpose flour. I'm not going to ask you to go to the store and buy whole wheat flour, but just know that in the future, if you did want to make this again, whole wheat flour is a really awesome way to get a full serving of whole grains, which is awesome. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is measure out a half a cup plus two tablespoons of lukewarm water. So I'm just using it from my sink. Um, I've let the water heat up a little bit. Um, it doesn't have to be hot by any means, just like a little warm. So let's do that super quick. And we're going to put it in this small bowl. So I've done half a cup. Let's do two tablespoons. So we have our water. It's a little bit warm. And we are going to add one teaspoon of active dry yeast. So one teaspoon is about half a packet. And we're going to put it in the water and give it a stir with a spoon or a fork. Um, and that is going to get our yeast activated. And put your small bowl to the side. We're going to let the yeast do its thing, we're not gonna bother it. Um, and let's move on to the flour. So let's start with our all-purpose flour. Um, you're gonna need a large bowl and your flour. Grab your one cup, measuring cup, and we are gonna use a spoon. It's important to not pack flour down. We like to keep it light and fluffy in the measuring cup. Also, flour is very messy, so let me give you permission to make a little bit of a mess. And just make sure you help clean it up later. All right, so with flour, we like to put a little bit more in and then level it off back into the container. And then we can add that to our bowl. The whole wheat. 
Um, and for this, we are going to use a half a cup plus two tablespoons. And you'll notice like a difference in texture. Um, I think the whole wheat flour is a little bit more grainy and the all purpose was like a little fluffier. Kind of reminded me of snow. All right, to level that off, add it in and the tablespoon, that's the big guy. Um, and same thing, you can use your finger or a spoon and two. Awesome. And that's it for the flour. Good job. Now we are going to add some salt. We only need a fourth of a teaspoon, so it's very small compared to the large tablespoon. So not too much salt. And get that in with our flour mixture. And then you can grab a spoon and give it a little mix. We want all of that to combine so you can't really tell like what is all-purpose flour and what is whole wheat flour. It should just look like one good mixture. We get to dig a hole in the middle. So just carve out a little hole that maybe a ball could fit in, like a tennis ball. Um, and that is where we are going to pour our yeast and water mixture. The yeast has had time to activate. Um, it should look a little cloudy. There might be some yeast floating up on the top. That's totally normal. Um, and we are just going to pour that in the center of that hole. I know it's super tempting to mix it right now. Um, we are going to add our honey and olive oil. If you don't have these specific items, you can use um, maple syrup for this or brown sugar and then if you don't have olive oil totally fine you can use canola oil vegetable oil so for the honey we're gonna do just one teaspoon for the olive oil we are going to do one tablespoon so we're back to the big guy we are finally ready to mix so you can use your spoon at first and the dough will start to come together. Really try to get all of the ingredients to get to know each other. They don't have to social distance like we do. We want them mingling. Once it kind of looks flaky, if you can see that, um, feel free to use your hands. Cooking in the kitchen, science in the kitchen should be fun, right? So let's get our hands in there and you'll notice how the texture feels at first and then as you keep this is called kneading you can move this down a little bit you'll notice that the texture changes as we knead it and as the dough starts to come together we are done kneading our dough your hands might look like this <laughs> quick tip for getting sticky flour dough off of your hands instead of using soap and water at first use a little bit of flour and rub your hands together and that will cause all of this icky fun goop to just flake right off it's great back to the dough it should look like a nice little ball um, if your dough is a little too dry feel free to add water um, but do that like a tablespoon at a time we don't want to add too much water because it'll get too sticky um, but you should have a nice ball that you feel like you could go play with in the backyard we are going to grease a bowl um, you can use cooking spray or olive oil butter whatever is going to get your bowl just nice and greasy so our dough ball doesn't stick I'm going to use this cooking spray um, and grab a new clean bowl and place our ball in the bowl, roll it around a little bit so it all makes contact with the oil and then we will cover it. You can use a kitchen towel or saran wrap, whatever you have. I'm going to use a kitchen towel. And you are going to find a warm spot for our dough ball to rest. It's going to take a little nap. So if you have a window that gets some sunlight, that would be an awesome place to put it. 
Um, I'm going to set mine on the counter under a warm light. I am in Nebraska and there is snow on the ground, so the window method is not gonna work for me. Um, but for those of you in Austin, putting it by window would be great. So go ahead and set a timer for 45 minutes and you can go read, play outside, and come back and you're gonna be amazed at what it does. We are back, it's been 45 minutes. Our dough has had time to do its thing. Um, and you might notice that the dough changed a little bit. The dough got way bigger, um, almost doubled in size. That is awesome. So that happened because of our yeast. When we put it in the water, that activated it. When we added it to the bread, or to the dough rather, it was able to um, eat the sugars that were in the flour and the honey. Um, and when it ate those, it released carbon dioxide, which made the dough get bigger. So cool, science is awesome. Okay. So we're gonna grab our bowl and we're gonna take it over to a lightly floured surface. So make sure you have a clean surface um, and then throw a little bit of flour on it. Let's preheat our oven to 450 degrees. So make sure you have an adult helping you. The oven gets super, super hot. We are going to bring our dough out and place it here and we're going to knead it just to get it all ready to be rolled out. This is a rolling pin. Um, if you have one of these, that's great. Get a little bit of flour off of the surface and put it on the rolling pin. Um, if you don't have a rolling pin, no biggie. You can use a round cup um, and use that as a rolling pin instead. Just roll it in a nice even motion. If it's starting to stick, that means that we need some more flour. So this is looking pretty good to me. Um, you can see it's not really a full circle. It's like a little misshapen. I'm okay with that. Um, if you want to get really fancy and do like the real pizza makers do, because you are a real pizza maker now, um, you can take your dough and kind of toss it in the air a little bit. Pretty fun. Cooking is fun. Science is awesome. Kind of fold in the edges um, just so our toppings don't fall off and we're in that way creating a crust. So if you want to get really creative, um, you could even put like cheese underneath these folds and fold it in there. That would be a really cool way to get creative with this project. So when I did that, it actually ended up being more of a circle. Um, so it's looking more and more like a pizza. This is a fun part. Um, we are quarantined, right? It's super important that we don't go to the store a lot, as you guys know. So it's fun to kind of see what materials we have, what ingredients we have in our pantry and fridge, and just like, what can we do with them? Let's get creative. So I have gone through my pantry and I found an opened can of tomato soup, some cherry tomatoes, a fourth of an onion, two kinds of cheese. We have sharp cheddar and mozzarella, some fresh chopped up parsley, and a bunch of herbs. So Italian herbs include basil, thyme, um, some rosemary. Sometimes there are Italian herb blends and that's a great option. I also have crushed red pepper flakes and salt and pepper. So basically I'm just going to chop these vegetables up um, and get them ready to be put on a pizza. So I encourage you guys to go look in your pantry, go look in your fridge and see you know, what would be good on a pizza. Maybe you have some lunch meat or pepperoni. That would be great. I am challenging you to maybe try something that you've never had on pizza before. I personally have never had zucchini on pizza, but I think today is as good of a day as any to give it a try. So 
go check that out and ask an adult to help you get any vegetables chopped that you need and we'll be back here to assemble our pizza all right my vegetables are chopped and ready to go <laughs> I went ahead and put my crust on a piece of parchment paper um, just so it doesn't stick to anything when we add our vegetables. Start with the sauce and I'm just going to spoon out a spoonful and spread it around. Like I said, I'm using tomato soup because that's what I found in my fridge. Um, but if you have any pasta sauce, that would be really good. Um, even just canned tomatoes. Um, would be a really good option. The soup doesn't have any herbs added to it. It's basically just tomatoes. Um, I'm going to add my Italian herbs now. Add some salt and pepper. Our sauce is ready to go. It's now time to get super creative with our cheese and our vegetables. Think of your pizza as a blank canvas. You can really do whatever you want. You can make a happy face in the middle of it with your vegetables. You can make it an artistic design. Truly do whatever you want with your pizza. This is your time to be creative. There's no recipe for you to follow anymore. Um, just have fun with it. a little smiley face on my pizza. It is now time to put our pizza in the oven, the moment we have all been waiting for. My pizza is in the oven and I have set my timer for seven minutes. So go ahead and start your timer for seven minutes and we will check on our pizza. Hopefully the cheese will be nice and bubbly and it'll be ready for us to eat. Timer went off, which means it's time to get the pizza out of the oven. Be sure to ask an adult to help you get it out. The pizza is ready. You can still see the smiley face, which is so exciting. And we are going to let her cool for a little bit before we cut in and enjoy our lunch. Our pizza is cooled off. She is ready to be enjoyed. Um, if you have a pizza cutter on hand, Definitely use this, but make sure you ask an adult to help you. Uh, this is not something you want to be handling. It's very sharp. If you don't have a pizza cutter, no worries. You can use a knife. Um, but again, be sure to ask an adult for help. <laughs> Guys, I have my piece of pizza. Go grab yourself a piece and let us try our masterpieces together. On three. One, two, three. It's delicious. Who knew that the things I had in my fridge and pantry could make something so awesome. Thank you so much for joining me during this wonderful journey of making pizza from scratch. You are all amazing chefs, amazing scientists, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Cheers.